Hi, Al Williams here. Last time I showed you a Google spreadsheet that was set up to be an assembler, sort of, for the AM2900 bit slice CPU, actually for the board that's the evaluation board for the 2901-2903, acting as a 4-bit kind of, sort of, CPU. And I mentioned in an offhand way during that video that, well, you know, maybe don't hold your breath, but maybe I'll write a simulator for it. Well, you can breathe, because I did, in fact, write a simulator for it. This looks suspiciously like the last thing I showed, right? It's just the assembler. You've got labels and operands and, you know, operations. And then over here, you've got the binary code that you would plug into the board. That's because this is just the assembler. I didn't make any changes here. What I did do is add a sim tab, which I'll show you. And there's a bunch of pre-made demos here. Not that you can't put your own in, but it's just very convenient to have these. This is the binary coded decimal program that I showed in the last uh, video. These are all the exercises out of the original AMD documentation, some of which are very simple and some of which don't make any sense if you don't have like a scope probe hooked up to the actual board. There's one or two of them like that. But I went ahead and put all of them in there. So if you're trying to work through the book, uh, the code is there on each of the tabs. So to load any one of these, and I'm going to go ahead and load this demo one, you can come over to the extension macros, and then there's these different install macros that do all the actual work. So that just copies the stuff over from one tab to the main tab. So now we've got something a lot more substantial. I'm not going to go over it because we went over the program on the last video. You can catch up on that if you didn't catch it. But I will point out that um, C and D form a loop. See, that's disp, and it says, okay, continue to the next thing, branch to disp. So it's going to go there. That's where the answer is going to come out, um, just because there's no other real way to do that. So there's going to be two things put out on the bus for us to see, and it's just going to do that over and over and over again. So if we ever hit uh, location D, that's a good sign that it's over and we, we could stop. So let's look at the simulator tab. Unfortunately, it's uh, very difficult to make nice looking buttons on uh, Google Sheets. So this is what you get. This red run is because I had to abort a earlier run for long story reasons, and I guess I don't clean up properly. So normally this wouldn't be red if I hadn't already run it, and if I'd stopped normally, it would have not been red also. Probably should fix that, but not a high priority. Normally you don't have to do that. I'm going to go ahead and reset the processor, and you'll notice this checkbox here said to clear the registers. You can see the registers that are in the device. You can see the program counter. You can see the Q, A, and B registers. There's a few other things that make sense as you start working through. And then outside of this black region, there's a whole bunch of stuff that makes this work, including a whole copy of your program over here in decimal instead of binary. Uh, one of the things is, is Google really wants to work on decimal, and we really want to work on binary. So there are a few concessions here where we show hex numbers in some places and decimal numbers in other places. Usually it's pretty obvious which is which. So I want to go ahead and I'm not going to step through this one by one, but I wanted to show you how you do step. The board has the capability where you can press the step button while you're in load and it'll just run one instruction and stay on that instruction. So it's whatever's in the pipeline register. If you uncheck this box, you can do that also. But normally that's not what you want. So when you push on step, it's going to execute that line. That's going to cause the program counter to go up by one. You'll notice, obviously, we put a six in address zero. Again, I'm not going to go over how the program works. Uh, you could look at the stack. In this case, we didn't use the stack, but you know some instructions would use the stack. And you can just see everything that's that's done. The status, what's in the status latch, because not everything loads the status latch. And you can just do that as much as you want. Google macros are really slow. I mean, this machine's actually quite fast, and it still takes a long time. Uh, but sometimes you want to just run, and that's the purpose of this run icon here. I'm going to set a breakpoint. And do you remember I said if you could get to 
D, you were pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and set my breakpoint for that and click run. And you'll see, I guess part of the reason it's slow is it does just basically hit step, 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 and everything will update. So you'll watch everything update as it's running, and it's just very slow. So if you watch the PC, it just went from 4 to 5. It went from 5 to 6, and it just keeps running. Now, again, you'd probably want to have a printout of your program that you could follow along, or if you had a bigger screen, maybe you'd split the screen. Uh, since I'm videoing this, this is really small compared to my normal screen. But you can, in fact, go peek over here and see what's going on. Or, again, you can look at the pipeline register and see what's going on, even though it's a little confusing because it's in decimal. The good news is it's all 4-bit decimal, so, you know, most it could be is 15, so you don't have to know all sorts of exotic binary numbers. And we hit 13. Notice the run went back to clear like it should have to begin with, and that means we're on the breakpoint, and you could go pick the answers up out of the registers. So that's how it works. Not uh, too fancy. Probably a couple of creature comforts I should add, but it does work. And the advantage to this is, is it would let you work through the AMD manual or the last post and work through all the software on it and not have to actually find a rare, expensive 40-year-old PCB. Uh, because, you know, they, I don't know when the last time they made those were, and I was lucky enough to get one that's pretty much unused and in mint condition. But just looking around, that seems like that's fairly uncommon. So if you really wanted to develop some intuition about why the bit slice stuff worked the way it did and try your hand at writing programs, this is a good way to do it. Costs nothing. Uh, don't have to find anything exotic. It is a little slow, and as I note somewhere on here, uh, there's a few of the hardware signals that you rarely use that do not get correctly produced. I couldn't think of why anybody wanted to know what the carry and overflow for XOR and XNOR are. There's some Byzantine equation for it in the data sheets. I suspect it's not actually useful. It's just what happens to come out and they documented it. Uh, I, I couldn't think of a good reason why you would care, and especially because it's this enormously complicated uh, formula. You, I, I mentioned you can look in the data sheet at figure 9 if you want to see just how ugly that is. And the P and the G on the spreadsheet do not necessarily match the P and the G that's supposed to come out of the chip because those things are made to daisy chain to another chip. There is no other chip on the board we're simulating and therefore those outputs are not correctly produced but we do use the spirit of P and G to calculate the uh, carry and things like that. So in this case, it really wasn't important to get the output. Uh, it was more important to see what was happening, what was happening with the registers and things like that. So just because you see P and G on here, a lot of times it will match what the chip would have produced, but in some cases it's not. It's just internal. So there you go. Uh, read the post, read the last post, watch the last video, and then come back and try your hand at writing your own microcode using this simulator. Thanks for watching.